So, you've made the leap to the dedicated astronomy camera. No matter the circumstances or how you got here, you're here. And so now you've got one. I've got this uh, QHY163C uh, camera that I've been using here recently, as well as my replacement ZWO183MC Pro camera that I'm gonna go through the process to get it ready for your astrophotography set. And so what this journey is about is a sensor analysis. So I've got a few tips and tricks that I'm gonna show you based on this QHY camera on how to get through that sensor analysis and complete it without it airing out. And then two, using this ZWO, which is my replacement, we're gonna go through the complete assessment as well. We're gonna talk about offset. And we're gonna talk about how to calculate your unity gain. Uh, and we're gonna talk about how to calculate any other settings that you would like based on using Excel. Get ready. This is gonna be pretty technical, but I think you'll like it. So to get ready for your sensor analysis, you're gonna need a few things. One, you need a light source. You could use an iPad, uh, for example. Um, I bought this um, sketch board from Amazon for less than $20. So I can turn this on and I can vary the brightness by holding this button. So I want this to be as dim as possible. I also use this for my flats uh, when I'm doing my astrophotography sessions. But this is my light source, so you're gonna need that. And then you're gonna need a handful of blank sheets of paper. Doesn't matter the size, just as long as it covers your sensor. Uh, because you gotta get to a low enough light level for a sharp cap to do its work for the sensor analysis. So make sure you have those. Uh, some people use a, a white sheet or um, that you can fold a few times so you get to that right brightness and uh, level, okay? But I use paper, it works great as long as it's blank you're gonna get an even uh, view uh, of the light uh, all across the sensor for the analysis. You're also gonna need uh, power and USB for the camera. You can connect it to your laptop and you can cool it down, especially if you're inside. You still wanna cool it down to about zero at least uh, to do this session. Has no real advantages, but to keep your camera from overheating for no reason, it's a good idea, just go ahead and let it cool. So great, let's open this up. Ah, oh, that new camera smell. So if you've not seen a ZWO camera before, it comes in a lovely little case. We'll pull that out. And it's got a, a, a bunch of different accessories in here, um, adapters so that you can use for your different uh, setups. Spacers as well, if you, if you need them for back focus. Um, USB 2 and USB 3 cables for the camera, ZWO here. There's a few more spacers for getting your back, space, back spacing correct. Uh, and this is, this is actually a nice little uh, gift. Uh, it's a 1.25 inch uh, filter holder. So that's a good addition. You don't have to buy a two inch filter for that size camera sensor. And of course it comes with a quick guide. All right, quick unboxing. So now that you get your camera out of the bag and out of the box, um, really simple setup. You're just going to plug it in. You're going to leave the cap on, and then we're going to follow the directions on sharp cap. That's it. Bring up sharp cap. Got everything connected. I've got my light source turned on. I've still got my camera capped right now, but that's okay. Okay, so now we've got sharp cap open. Let's go ahead and connect the camera and see us here, the ZWO ASI 183MC Pro. Click on that. All right, now it's connected. So we're gonna go to tools and sensor analysis. And this begins at the bottom by giving you a measurement graph with a histogram. And it tells you that you need constant illumination, natural light is best. Um, so 
since we don't have natural light and we're using uh, this pad, we're gonna start there. First things first, we're gonna take the cap off. All right, now that's telling you, you got way too much light because that bar of histogram was here to the left, now it's over here to the right. Okay, let's turn my gain down to zero. Now, I have this as low as I can get it. Yeah, I'm raising it up. The desk that I'm talking about is my light source. So, got as low as I can get it. Um, I need to change my color space to raw 16. That's what the camera uses. Okay. And so I've got these capture areas, very large capture areas. So right now it's set to the highest one possible. Okay. All right, so good. Let's go ahead and take, because we want this histogram to come down to about 60%. And this will tell us that. So let's hit start so it can tell us that. All right, so we're gonna select an area of the image with uniform brightness, adjust the illumination to get a peak at about 65% with exposures anywhere between 0.26 seconds and two seconds. We have a nice large range there. And so right now, it's running, it's at 0.23 uh, seconds or 234 milliseconds. So let's get that histogram down. So I've got two sheets of paper. I'm gonna put it right underneath. Start. Okay, so far that made no change. So let's go a little bit higher. Two more. Okay, so now it's down. Came down. <clears throat> the exposure time is still 234. So we need to get that a little bit higher. So let's try one more piece of paper. Sitting at five sheets of paper. Now we're at 0.4 seconds. It's gone green. If you look down here in the bottom left corner, now it's green. Okay, that means we can proceed. So we're going to click proceed. And then this is going to go through its analysis. It's going to start creating graphs, doing changes to each of the settings in terms of exposure, in terms of gain. It's just going to start putting together a, a, a chart. Um, and from this chart, it's going to start creating data for us. <clears throat> this, analysis. this can take some time. It can take hours. It can take minutes. It just depends on the camera um, and the sensor. But, um, you know, go ahead and get a coffee or something like that. Let it do its thing and we'll come back. Now it's asking for me to put the uh, cat back onto the sensor. So let's go ahead and do that. The cap is on and you see again, it's changed to green, letting you know that it's ready for you to proceed. And then you click on proceed and it goes through and does a bunch of these measurements uh, again now with the cap on. Now it's saying, go ahead, uncover the sensor gain uh, for gain measurement. So again, if you're looking down here on the bottom, I'm gonna uncover my sensor. Nothing else has changed. I still left the five sheets of paper on top of my light source, okay? Because I don't wanna change that information or that baseline for this test. And now that we're green, I'm gonna hit proceed. Okay, so I've now switched to the QHY 163CCD um, camera that I have. So between the CMOS camera of the ZWO and the CCD camera of the QHY, there are some differences that I wanna go over. So before I get back into offset, um, <clears throat> that's one of the differences uh, you'll see here. If you look at this uh, on the right with sharp cap, um, it's got an offset bar slider that you can adjust. This offset bar is, or slider is not available with the CCD camera. Uh, I'm sorry, the CMOS camera of the ZWO. So, I'm not sure why that is with SharpCap. Some more investigation needed for that. <clears throat> but I, I want it to, to be able to go through that offset discussion with you. So I'm gonna take a step back first um, and, and talk about uh, a few of the tips and tricks to make sure you get all the way through your sensor analysis. 
So I had struggles with this particular camera to get all the way through the sensor analysis. And what the sensor analysis kept asking me to do was to adjust the capture area so that it can measure, do the measurements accordingly, right? So <clears throat> as I kept making the adjustments of, that I thought I needed to make, I was not getting anywhere. It kept crashing on me, okay? So right now I've got the cap on. Um, all right, so cap is off. It's doing its thing. It's got, it's not set to the raw 16. It needs to be raw 16. All right, so it's going through the, the, the process and it's trying to get it straight, trying to get it straight for this, this analysis. Now, it would stop, it would crash, it would get somewhere. It would just tell me, hey, something's not right. Need you to change the capture area. And a lot, so it starts off with shrink, 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 make it smaller. So if you go over here to the capture area, this is where you can change the size of it. And so what I did in order to get it to go all the way through the process without crashing is I would come down one step at a time. All right, I changed the capture area, changed the capture area, changed the capture area until it eventually, I think it got somewhere down in this neighborhood. And then once it got down into that neighborhood, uh, it said, oh, it's too small. I need it to be bigger. Okay. And so in order to make it bigger, let's see if this shows up for me. All right. Because you know, intuitively, if I go make this capture area bigger, it's just going to crash again. Right. I've already seen that. So, so why am I going through this whole process again of making the thing bigger? All right. Why do I want to do that? So uh, that's not what it's asking you to do. So there is on the screen there it is this box all right and so when it tells you after you've gone through and you've shrunk it and you've shrunk it and you've shrunk it and then it comes back and it says okay i need you to make it bigger what it's asking you to do is to go in and change this capture area here now to something a little bit bigger and so you do that until this goes green boom and then you're done now you've dialed it in and it will go through the entire process for your camera so if you've got like me, if you had that issue where the QHY 163 would not go through the entire sensor analysis, it would keep crashing, it would keep airing out. That's what's happening is it's asking for you to get to the right size um, surface area that it's looking at that has even illumination all the way around it. And, um, and even what it says here, it's got 100 pixels on each side, right? That's what it's asking you to do. Um, that's a little bit difficult to just predict what it's going to be off the bat. For me, it was a little bit of a struggle trying to get to that point. And so that's why I'm suggesting if you run into those same issues with your camera, you just want to keep changing the capture area down one by one by one until it gets to the point where it then says, oh, I need you to make it bigger. And of course, you don't want to make it bigger here. You want to make it bigger in the, one of these boxes. You could even move this box anywhere you want, okay, on the, on the screen. All right, and once you've done that and it goes green, then it should be able to go all the way through the process, complete your analysis, capture your data, put it in your Excel spreadsheet and do the things you need to do with it, okay? All right, good. So <clears throat> that being said, um, let's talk about offset. So I'm gonna put the, cam the cap back onto the camera. And I think you can do this with more than sharp, sharp cap. So if you're the ZWO camera, um, has the offset capability uh, that you can deal with in other tools uh, like uh, Ashton Photography Tool, which I haven't done. So I'll try that here later. Um, then you can go through this process, but since I've got this now, I'm gonna go through the process with this camera and I'm just gonna make the capture area as big as possible again. And so what the histogram is showing you are three different, uh, three different hist histograms. So before actually, you've got the mean of all three of your colors, red, green, and blue, okay? So I'm looking at the mean. That's gonna be the white bar, the white histogram on, on the left here, okay? And so at zero gain, if my gain is zero, right? I want that histogram to sort of come off of the end, okay? So let's try, let's try 10. And you can see over here to the right, it came off of the edge, um, appropriately. And so from a offset standpoint, eight, move the histogram over. So the mean histogram is over. It's completely showing uh, no tails or anything like that cut off by uh, on the left, right? So you, that's clipping. So you don't want any clipping. You got all of your data right where you want it to be uh, in that histogram. 
So let's just change the gain. So again, uh, if you go back to, let me do this real quick. Okay, so here's my QH Y file um, that I created. And in here, I've got the offsets. Okay, and I've, I've just gone through the process at each of these different gain values and look to see where my histogram, the average was not being clipped, okay? <clears throat> so as long as the average is not being clipped, that was the minimum offset, not maximum, but minimum offset that I would choose for each of these different gain values, okay? So let's go back to chart cap, okay? And let's choose a higher gain. So I'm gonna choose a gain, I'm sorry, not gain, yeah, higher gain. All right, now I've got a higher gain, I wanna move that as well, so again, it's very hard to see on this particular graph, um, but you want to make sure that that average is as far over as possible. Okay, not clipping on the left, and you can you can look at your numbers here as well and try to see whatever method you want to use to determine whether that's true for you. Um, that's what you would do. So um yeah so as and and all that's all i've done for each one of these i've just changed the offset i changed the gain changed the offset when i change the offset i'm looking for that average histogram to not be clipped on the left here all right and so i, I did that for i'll close this right now so i did that for every gain value i have here which includes my unity gain which i didn't know was 136 at the time um to show it as 13. so i've got my offsets all labeled out now, the higher the gain is, the more forgiving the offset numbers are. So there's a larger range of offsets you can choose from uh, for, uh, let's say, the 350 gain value, if you wanted to do the 350 gain. I'm doing 41, but as I kept on changing the offset number, the, inst the histogram uh, didn't change a lot. So there's a lot of range between uh, 40 and probably 70 that I could use as offset. So it becomes um, less of a factor, the higher the gain, you don't need a whole lot of offset to deal with. Not that I am gonna be going at such uh, dim targets that I require a 500 gain value, but just as a, a piece of information for you, um, you can actually go through and, and set these offsets using the histogram and just making sure that you're not clipping any data. Whatever that minimum number is, is what you can start with. You can always go higher. You can move the Insta histogram anywhere you want. I keep trying to say Instagram. Okay, so that's offset, uh, or at least how to start trying to look at capture offset. Like I said, I will work on a video for explaining gain and offset and how to use them with your camera, because that's important. In the meantime, of course, there's a lot of uh, optional um, videos on YouTube that show you and explain gain and offset. So um, till then, thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps you. And remember, the sky is always the limit when your mind is unwilling to fly. So go beyond. Thanks again. Kevin Francis, Astro Photographer. Thank <laughs> you.